you know, I've looked back and I've thought about why is it I'm attracted uh, to certain people. And it's not just because of their positions. It's not just because of their beliefs, but it's because of their commitment to America. You know, I guess I'm just truly uh, in awe and I'm truly attracted to true, sincere patriots. Those who just don't talk about it, but those that put uh, something on the line, put skin in the game and get out there and do something about it. And our next guest is no different. And that's why we are honored to have Joe DiGuardi, former congressman, author of Unaccountable Congress, and also, of course, CPA, that just continues to fight. Not to fight for a position, not to fight for an elected office, to, to fight for America. And I think that needs to be said every now and then, Joe, to remind Thank you, you that, uh, how honored we are to have you with us. You know, for our listeners out there, Joe DiGuardi is 73 years old folks. Wow. And he hasn't given up and he's fighting. Hey, I mean, Joe, when I get done my interviews with you, I'm tired. OK, you wear me out. And, you know, and for folks out there, I, you know, and I some I do my job sometimes well in reminding folks of your organization. Then I get talking with you so much and wound up that I forget to mention truth in government dot org. Now, this is how uh, or this is the vehicle. This is how Joe gets the message out and gets people involved and educates people and motivates people. It's a true and a pure mission here to educate and and then motivate people to get involved to help make things better. And you have were asked uh, to put together uh, some bullet points about truth in government. We haven't talked about truth in government for a while, so I'm going to let you go ahead and and talk about how you responded to the to, uh, I think it was Bloomberg, wasn't it, that was asking you, can you just tell us about your organization? Why do we have truth in government? America is a wealthy nation with a poor government. We're in debt on the books over $17 trillion, borrowing billions of dollars annually from countries we don't trust, like China, and this fails to even include nearly $60 trillion in unfunded obligations that politicians have promised to current and future generations that we're going to have to pay. It's unsustainable. It's a fiscal path that's uh, disastrous, and it's threatening the promise of the American dream for our children and grandchildren. And by the way, I feel personally, personally about that because my dad came here, worked hard to give me access to the American dream. Joe, if I can, may, may I interject? Sure. We don't talk about this enough. One of the unique things about the American society and the American vision, and people don't talk about this enough, mm -hmm. and that is... We were unique in our society that we believed we had an obligation, a moral obligation, to pass yeah. on to our children yeah. a better society, a better government, and a better America. That's yeah. something unique to us. That was what drove us to, uh, as I used to say, always make the right decision, ultimately. Right. But and we're doing the opposite. We're giving them a big mortgage. Everybody's born with a mortgage on their head now. Who's to blame? Truth in Government is a nonpartisan organization for a reason. I believe that both parties in Washington are responsible for the reckless fiscal path they have set this U.S. government on. And, you know, I hate to talk about, uh, you know, Republicans being blameworthy, but think about it, Curtis, just so I stop my point here. We put $10 trillion added to the $5 trillion that came out of the Clinton administration with two presidents, George W. Bush and Obama. And Lord knows what's going to come next, because Obama neatly disguised a lot of what we're going to have to pay in the future. But the problem, I go on to say, lies, in terms of who's to blame, in putting numbers in the control of politicians. Politicians who can influence the numbers of what we owe today and the next generation owes. They're going to certainly do things for their own political benefit and to the detriment of accountability, transparency, and future generations. So, you, know, you know, and right now, it is. Uh, Joe, right now, uh, what you have talked about these last several months is so important because look where, the, I mean, the music is ending. The music's ending and the games are coming to an end. There's no more rabbits in the hat. And it's because of the things you've talked about. We've ignored the realities and we don't even want to talk about them or report the realities. Look at this debt ceiling fight that's coming up. They're talking the Republicans about not fighting or demanding anything on the cut side. 
right. and just giving and, them it's, the it's extra crazy. day. And if you look at the times today, uh, it's skating, the, the title, there it is, and there's Jack Lew at the top, our Treasury Secretary, skating close to the edge again on the debt ceiling. You know, a very smart political animal. Yeah, but stop, uh, Joe, analyst, Joe, 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 hold it. We're yeah. not... But see, look at the mentality. We're not yeah. skating next, I mean, to the edge, next to the edge, because we have runaway spending and borrowing and irresponsible government and waste. Oh, no. We're skating, no. in his mind, we're skating uh, at, next to the edge because we just won't go and borrow all the money we need, right? Exactly. That's the point. They take the public's attention off the real point. This guy's saying we got to keep borrowing money, we got to keep spending money we don't have. Borrowing it from anybody, including China, who's building aircraft carriers right now, while we're, you know, cutting our defense budget for, for things like that on infrastructure. But someone very smart told me, and boy, I tell you, this could be a big trick by the Democrats because they now know. Look at the poll this morning, Washington Post. There's a 54 percent chance now that we'll pick up at least six seats in the Senate meaning that the House and Senate come together. That is putting the fear of God into Democrats. So what my guy told me, this whole thing is to get this debt ceiling thing up front so that the Tea Party people can see that the normal, you know, midstream Republicans aren't doing anything so they can then jump into these primaries, give them enough chance to raise money because we want to run against Tea Party people in the main elections. That's the only way we're going to keep these Senate seats. This could be a big trick right here. You know, it's another Trojan horse. But I just wanted to say that that's an interesting perspective. Now, let me go to point yeah, three. What's Joe, the Joe, solution uh, Joe, before Joe, I get to point four? Isn't it amazing, Joe? All the games that are played, all the schemes that are at play, all the motivations of all these people, and none of this is about America. It's all exactly. about self and, 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 and self-benefit. Uh, that's the point. So what's the solution? I say point blank. The solution is not underline, not capitalize it, not simple. It will take years of fiscal restraint by politicians in Washington, but the solution begins by telling the American people the truth. I put that in capital. The truth begins with using the right accounting principles for federal budgeting and financial reporting so the American people can understand the long-term fiscal path of the U.S. government. Hey, we've got to be honest with them. This cannot be solved in one election or overnight, but unless we start putting on the books the real numbers, we're not going to be able in 10 years or 20 years to turn this ship around. You know what, and you I know, told Joe, you before, that iceberg like Osama bin Laden is hiding in plain sight. People just don't want to see it. One of the things the Republicans should do, and I don't understand it, and if they're not going to do it, maybe the conservative grassroots organizations should do it, and that is start doing polls of the American people – about asking them questions about the true con fiscal condition of the United States. Because then you use the poll and the responses to move yep. to number two and say, see, you really don't know. They've hidden it from you. And then you go to number three. Why are you electing people that hide from you the truth? And, you know, there's, a, there's a, I believe, a, a formula there for communications and then motivating people that's not, they're not using. Because let me tell you, if someone goes to the average person and get them to truly understand, it isn't 17 trillion, it's 60, 85, 90, 100 trillion. You know, right. that's pretty powerful. And that's the point I make in my last point that I want to get quickly. How can citizens take action? And then I say citizens can become engaged by educating themselves on the true state of our nation's fiscal affairs. The Treasury Department issues an annual consolidated financial statement, which details, and I say, but in footnotes, not capitalized, not underscored, on the balance sheet, on the financial statement, it details the long-term unfunded obligations of Social Security and Medicare at over $38 trillion on the last statement, not on the balance sheet, but below where you can't find it in footnotes. And, 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 and you need to understand this. And I said, having an understanding of what the U.S. government truly owes will provide the average American citizen with a working knowledge to hold their elected officials accountable for the national debt they've accumulated through profligate deficit spending and borrowing both on and off the books. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. And you're right. We should be taking these polls because I think the people viscerally in their gut know we're going in the wrong direction. And 
and, and, and I don't think the politicians want those polls. I don't think they want to hear it. Well, they want to hear how are they going to get reelected. You know how it's our it, problem. It's we got a new special interest group. It's called Congress. And, and it's easy, Joe. I mean, it's easy to go out and call people stupid and ignorant and paint a broad brush. But, you know, if you want to be a leader, then you got to be an educator. If you want to be a leader, then go out and tell the people, do you really want to stand on the railroad tracks? Let me tell you about the train that's here, that's coming. And if you don't get off, if you don't get involved, you know, I'm telling you, you know this, you're saying it right here, 80 trillion or 200 trillion in long term uh, liabilities over the next so many years, because, you know, every time. Every time some politician says, well, this is what we're going to do over the next 15 or 20, we should say, well, you're not telling the American people all of the obligations you're racking up over the next 10 or 20. You know, there should be an immediate response all the time telling the American people the truth. Yes, and common sense tells you the easiest answer right now is to use the accounting system that the government applies to you on Wall Street, on Main Street, and that's the accrual basis, which is basically liability accounting, not just cash flow, and it's there. The accounting profession has invented it. The SEC enforces it. If you're a publicly traded company, you need to put everything on the books. What's wrong with using that system for the U.S. government? There is nothing. That's right, Joe. Hey, Joe, I've got to go, and thank you for being with us. You stay warm up there in New York, and as always, thanks for sharing this. Folks, don't forget, if you're not following truthandgovernment.org, do, because Joe is uh, posting his uh, writings, his research. uh, Well, his vision is there at truthandgovernment.org. Thank you, Joe, as always. We appreciate it.